Praise God. It's wonderful to be with everyone once again. Are we ready for the word of God? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Praise God. If we're ready for the word of God, somebody shout a wonderful hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Today we're talking about Holy Ghost power. Amen. Holy Ghost power. Praise God. Amen. Now we've discussed the Holy Spirit plenty of times. Amen. The Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. The Father is one. The Son, the Holy Spirit. Three is one. There's one God. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Somebody say truth. 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 Amen. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the one that anoints his people to do his work, to do the work of God. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives visions and dreams to his prophets. Amen. The Holy Spirit is wisdom and knowledge. So many gifts of the Holy Spirit that's given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is power. Somebody say Holy Ghost power. Holy Holy Ghost Ghost power. power. Amen. Today, particularly, we're talking about Holy Ghost power. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm going to go through many scriptures, as I always do. If you can, follow along. Amen. Also, you can write down the scriptures and go through them in your personal private time. The Holy Spirit is a person. You need to know him. Amen. You need to have a relationship with him. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is not just a force. He is a person, a personality. Amen. And we're talking today particularly about the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. First, I'm going to turn to the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 45. Luke, chapter 24, verse 45. The word of God says, actually, let's go to Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, verse 49, amen. The word of God says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endowed with the power from on high. Amen. Praise God. This is that power that Jesus Christ is talking about. Amen. I'm going to read again from actually from 47 to 49. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in the name, in his name among all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry, tarry means delay, ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endowed with power from on high. Why did Jesus tell his disciples to wait for the power? And which power is he talking about? Amen. I'm going to now turn to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Today we're talking about Holy Ghost power. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the outermost parts of the earth. 
Amen. So the power that Jesus was telling his disciples to wait for is the power of the Holy Ghost. Because he knew without the power of the Holy Ghost, they could not be witnesses. Amen. But ye shall receive power after, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the, unto the outermost part of the earth. Praise God. Amen. So, Amen. What is the Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost is a personality, but we're talking today about the power that the Holy Ghost gives. And we learn right there in the scriptures that Jesus told them that they should wait because it, he wants them to receive the power of the Holy Ghost so that they can be witnesses. Amen. For you to be a witness of Jesus Christ, you need power. Amen. The kingdom of God is not with words, but with power. Amen. You can speak and speak and speak and speak, but if there's no power of the Holy Spirit, people may not give their life to Jesus. Amen. Although, as long as you're speaking the word of God, people can still give their life to Jesus. Amen. What does the power of the Holy Ghost do? I'm going to list a few things here. The power of the Holy Ghost, as we learn, is so when so we can be witnesses of Jesus Christ. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost is so children of God can stand strong for the things of God because you need power to stand. The power of the Holy Ghost convicts. The power of the Holy Ghost equips. It equips, which means that you don't have the power to do certain things, but he equips you with that power and grace. Amen. The Holy Spirit empowers people of God, amen, and to grow in grace and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit gives boldness. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit heals. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that delivers people from bondage and chain and addictions and oppression. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's that resurrection power of Lord Jesus Christ. Power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is what gives boldness. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that enables a believer to cast out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Jesus Christ said, wait till the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Before Peter, Apostle Peter, he denied Jesus. He ran away. But when the Holy Spirit filled him, he now preached Christ, and 3,000 people came out and gave their life to Christ. What Peter was before the power of the Holy Ghost, he wasn't able to do it. But with the power of the Holy Ghost, he was able to preach boldly. 3,000 people came and gave their life to Jesus. Today, we're talking about Holy Ghost power. Amen. Amen. One of the things, that the power of the Holy Ghost enables a believer to do is cast out devils. Cast out devils. Now, there's things like spirit of infirmity. There's people that are outright possessed. Amen. There's all types of, you know, people watch demonic movies and they become possessed. All types of things. And it takes a believer, a born-again, spirit-filled child of God to pray and cast those devils out. Beloved, there's something called the spirit of divination. If you ever went to a psychic, they're not using the Holy Spirit. They're using something called the spirit of divination that is given to them by the devil. And the only thing the devil can do, because the devil doesn't know anything, the, the, the people the devil is trying to destroy is the information they give to psychics. Very simple. Well, you know, they'll say, well, this person is 
fighting against you. Yes, because the devil knows that that person is fighting against you. Very simple. That's all their power is. All the people that the devil are trying to kill, steal, and destroy from, he just lets the people know. But he doesn't give the spirit of divination or the psychic power to deliver, just to oppress. So I'm going to read from Acts verse chapter 16, verse 16, and I will just go from 16 to 18. The book of Acts chapter 16, 16 through 18. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. These are the disciples. Amen. Paul. I'm sorry, Paul the Apostle. A certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her master much gain by truth saying. Truth saying is just part of the spirit of divination. Amen. Giving false prophecies and all type of tarot card reading and all type of things. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. So, the spirit of divination can tell the truth sometimes, but it's a half-truth. That truth is just to make you believe enough so they can destroy you. That spirit of divination that was upon that woman said that, these men are servants of the Most High God. Yes, that spirit knows it because they don't want that woman to be delivered. Verse 18, and did, she, did, and did, did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, not the woman, but the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same day. Amen. So that spirit of divination was upon this woman, and the masters of this woman made money. So when people came, that soothsaying demonic spirit was giving them false prophecies and all type of things, and they were making money. The first thing you know about a false prophet is if they pray for you, they're demanding money. Prayer is free. Amen. It's only if you're led to give money. So this spirit was only doing this to make the master's money and to hurt people. But when Paul realized that this is a spirit of divination, he cast that spirit out in the name of Jesus. And Paul had the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we learned that the power of the Holy Spirit enables the believers to cast out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to now turn to the book of Psalm. Psalm, Psalm 104, verse 30. Psalm 104, verse 30. Holy Ghost Power. The word of God says, Thou sendest forth thy spirit. It, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Amen. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The Holy Ghost power is creation power. Amen. It's with that power of the Holy Spirit that he creates, that God creates. Amen. That organ in your body, the world, the universe, is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. So the Holy Ghost power is a creating power. Amen. Creating power of God. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to now go to the book of Luke, chapter 1. 30 through 35. Amen. The book of Luke, chapter 1, 30 through 35. Now, many people have argued. Many people say, I don't believe God. How can, how can Jesus be born by a virgin? I don't believe that 
How is that possible? How can Jesus be born by a virgin? If you want to know the answer to that question, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, the answer is the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Ghost have been there since the beginning. One God. Jesus had to come to earth as a redeemer, but he needed a human body. Amen. He came down. He humbled himself. He's God in heaven. He came down as a man for the redemption of the world. Amen. I'm going to read. I'm going to start from Luke chapter 30. Luke chapter 1, verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. 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 He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's saying, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. I'm going to say it again. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power, somebody say power, 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 of the highest shall overshadow thee, therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that puts the seed of Jesus inside Mary. Amen. That's why we don't worship Mary, because she's a human being. Is Jesus Christ, which is God, that came down as flesh, that died for our sins. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So next time somebody asks you, well, how? How can Jesus be born by a virgin? You let them know it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can do a whole Bible study just on that right there. But let's move forward. <clears throat> I pray we're learning something here today because many of you have been wondering this on your own. Amen. So it's the Holy Ghost that, put the, that made Jesus have a human body. Amen. That put the seed of Jesus Christ inside of Mary. Amen. Praise God. I'm now going to turn to Luke. We're talking about Jesus here. I'm going to turn to Luke chapter 4. The same Luke chapter 4. One through two. Amen. Luke chapter four, verse one through two. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So we know Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Amen. So before Jesus began his ministry, being filled of the Holy Ghost, he went to the wilderness. Amen. And he fasted for 40 days. He was even tempted by the devil. And when he finished the fasting and he overcame the temptation of the devil, let's now fast forward to Luke. Chapter 4, 14 through 19. What happened then? Luke chapter 4, 14 through 19. 
And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Somebody say power. 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 And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Amen. So he came with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit. He was teaching in the synagogues with power. I will continue. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for, to read. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of, the, of sight of, to the blind, and to set liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So when the Holy Spirit put power upon Jesus Christ after the temptation, after the fasting, he came with power of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him to do what? He was anointed to preach the gospel. He was anointed to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance, deliverance, casting out devils, breaking people from bondage, releasing ca- people from captivity, recovering sight of the blind, setting liberty from them that are bruised. Praise God. So all of those things are from the power of Holy Spirit. Amen. We're talking today about Holy Ghost power. We're focusing today on the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. We're now going to turn to the book of Acts. Amen. Just a few more scriptures and we're going to round up and we're going to pray. Amen. We're going to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. How God has how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Somebody say power. 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 Say it louder. Say power. 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 Somebody say Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. power. Amen. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed. For healing, you need the power of the Holy Ghost, press of the devil. For God was with him. Amen. Praise God. Praise so him. we've learned quite a few things here. we learned a few things. we learned that Jesus, before he ascended, said, wait. He told the disciples, wait. Be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost so you can be my witnesses. Peter, that was scared, denied Jesus. When he received the Holy Ghost and power, he now witnessed 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. We understand that the, it's the power of the Holy Ghost that's, that's the creating power. Amen. Praise God. We've learned that Jesus was anointed with Holy Ghost and power. Amen. Praise God. We've learned that to cast out devils, you need the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We've also learned healing, deliverance, setting captives free. All the people can be delivered in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Now, before Jesus came down on earth as a human, as a human, in human form, The Old Testament, the Spirit of God used to also come upon men, but did not dwell in men. The Spirit of God came upon Samson, 
and gave him strength four times. The Spirit of God came upon David. The Spirit of God came upon Saul for a time. But the Spirit of God did not dwell in man like now. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to show you a scripture um, in Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 14, verse 6. The book of Judges, chapter 14, verse... Let's all go from 5 to 6. Amen. Then when Samson down and his father, then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Tim, Timnath, and came to the vineyard, the vineyard of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. So a lion came against Samson. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. You understand? The Spirit of the Lord wasn't dwelling with him. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have a rent a kid, which is a a small, a baby goat. And he he had nothing in his hand. So he destroyed that young lion, and he had nothing in his hand, no weapon. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. So the Spirit of God came upon Samson and gave him power. The Spirit of God came upon David, King David. The Spirit of God came upon King Saul. The Spirit of God came upon them for, to accomplish their office for a time. But now, in the New Testament, after Jesus has come, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. The Holy Spirit now dwells inside of us. And I want to show you two scriptures before I round up. Today we're talking about Holy Ghost power. The power that we're learning about today dwells inside of us already. You don't have to go anywhere to look for it. Amen. You just have to accept Jesus into your life. John, the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. The book of John, chapter 14, Verse 6. Amen. I'm sorry. The book of John chapter 14 verse... The book of John chapter 14 verse 15. John chapter 14 verse 15. Jesus said this. He said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Not because you're scared of the devil. Not because you're scared of, to, of going to hell. Not because you're scared of the consequences of sin. Because you love him. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. Which means Jesus is a comforter. He will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Amen. That comforter is the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll continue to read. Even the spirit of truth. Somebody say truth. Truth. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. In you. Amen. Praise God. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen. Praise God. So, the Holy Spirit is with us and dwells in us. Amen. So when we're talking about all the power, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to go looking for a gift from any man. The Holy Spirit dwells in a believer. Amen. A believer. I'm going to turn to the last scripture here today, and then we're going to pray. Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 8, 10 through 11. The book of Romans, chapter 8, 10 through 11.
the word of God says, and if Christ be in you, Lord Jesus Christ dwells in us when we accept him into our lives. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. That's why we're born again in Christ. Amen. The old man has gone away, and the new man is alive in Jesus. Amen. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen. That righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. That resurrection power, that resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead, Death was conquered that day. The word of God says, oh, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? There's no more power. There's no more sting in death because Jesus Christ was risen from the dead by the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's that resurrection power that revives the believer. That's that resurrection power that raises the dead. That organ in your body that's withering, that doesn't want to act the way it does, is the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that will revive that organ in your life, that will revive your spiritual life, that the things that are dead, the useless things that are dead will stay dead, but the good things will come alive. Amen. We talked today about the Holy Ghost power. Amen. In order to receive the power of the Holy Ghost, it's the Holy Spirit that will even let you know that what I'm telling you is true. It's the Holy Spirit that will even allow you to accept Jesus. If you're here today and you want to accept Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, today is your day. Today is the greatest opportunity. I will invite you to repeat after me. Say, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. Louder. Say, Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Come into my life. Come into Come my life. Into my Come life. into my life. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. Say, Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Christ. Christ. I'm a sinner. sinner. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Say, Jesus Christ, take complete control of my life. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Christ, Christ take control, control of my life. life. Today and forevermore. Today, Today and forevermore. forevermore. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus, in name. Jesus name. name. Everybody say amen. 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 I congratulate you if you've given your life to Jesus for the first time. Praise God. Amen. You've done the best thing that you can possibly ever do. Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. He abides in Amen. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit, abides in you. What a wonderful Lord and Savior that we have. Amen. Right now, I just want us to take just a few moments and begin to ask God for mercy. Anywhere we fell short, anywhere we committed sin, let's ask God for mercy before we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, please have mercy on us. Wherever we fell short, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us. Have mercy, Lord. Where we sin, let your blood wash us clean in the mighty name of Jesus. Confess your sins to the Lord. Say, this I did, that I did. Lord, I'm sorry. I can't do it again. Have mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confess and forsake his sins shall have mercy. Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 We learned today much about the Holy Ghost. But we learn specifically about the Holy Ghost power. 
the power of the Holy Ghost and how the power of the Holy Ghost helps a believer. Amen. We want more of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is infinite, which means you can have power, but you can have more power. Amen. Let me give you an example if you don't understand. Amen. You can drink a very small cup of water, and you drink water. But you can drink a gallon of water, and you will have more water. You can, if it's possible, you can drink a five-gallon bottle of water, and you'll have more water. Amen. The Holy Spirit doesn't have boundaries like a a stomach. The Holy Ghost power is infinite. You can have more and more of him. Amen. Praise God. We're going to ask today that God, I need your power to be a witness. I need your power to cast out devils that are coming around my neighborhood and my family and children. Lord, I need your power to convict sinners to become believers in Christ. I need your power. Amen. We're going to pray like this. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit. My life is available. My My life life is available. available. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. power. In the name of Jesus. Talk to God in your own way. Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, our life is available. Fill us with your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost Under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, to do exploits for you, to be witnesses, to be bold in you. To cast out devils, to heal the sick, oh Lord, for your glory, in the name of Jesus, oh God, tell him, my life is available. Talk to him in your own way. Tell him, I'm my here. Life my life is available. Is Holy I'm Spirit. here before you tonight. Oh, I'm here Jesus. before you today. Oh, my God. life is available. Fill me with your power, in the Fill name of Jesus. He will look into your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. When you accept Jesus, you receive the power of the Holy Ghost. You're asking, oh, Lord, fill me. Fill me. Overflow. I want overflow. I want more of you. I want more of your spirit. Jesus, name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 There's something called the spirit of lukewarmness, not hot, not cold. God can revive your spiritual life. Amen. When you wake up, you don't want to read the Bible anymore. You don't want to come to Bible study anymore. You don't want the things of God anymore. It's lukewarm. There's a thing called spirit of sleep and slumber. Amen. There's also organs in your body that, that are withering that need to receive the resurrection power of God. We're going to pray like this. Say, resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. Resurrection Resurrection power of the Holy Holy Ghost. Revive my body, soul, and spirit. Revive Revive my my body, body, soul, and spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. Revive my body, soul, and spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to talk to God. Right now, that organ that's in your body that's not behaving the way, is it your pancreas? Let it receive life. Resurrection power of God. Come upon everyone. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your resurrection, revival power of God, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, fill our life in the name of Jesus Christ, any organ in anyone's body or the people we stand in the gap for that's withering, receive life. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, every good thing that was dead in your life, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, receive life. In the name of Jesus, I command in the name of Jesus, receive life. 
Receive life. Fire. Every spirit of lukewarmness. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Resurrection. Power of God. Revive our spiritual life. Open our understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to pray like this. I want you to lay your right hand on any part of your body that you're not feeling well. If it's your head, your heart, your stomach, your leg, whichever. Amen. You're going to pray like this in faith. Say, every dying organ in my body. Every Every dying dying organ in my body. Receive life. Receive life. life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Right now, pray. I don't care what your doctor said. You learned today about the Holy Ghost power. Every dead organ in your body, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive life. Receive life. Holy Ghost power. In the name of Jesus Name Receive Jesus. life in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 You are life. You are the life. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Any Jesus. Jesus. Any Jesus. 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 Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I don't care. Receive life. 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 Receive Jesus, oh. resurrection power of God. Power. Let the oil take life in my shoulder in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. Receive life. In the name of Jesus. By your strength, we are healed. We are healed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Jesus. you are healed. Everybody say amen. 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 If you know you've been healed right now, I want you to shout hallelujah. 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 We're going to pray like this. You can take your hand away from your chest. Say every power of addiction and bondage. Every power of addiction and bondage. bondage. In my life and family. In In my life and family. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Talk in the name of right now. Every power of addiction by the power of God. Break that power. Break that power. In the name of Jesus. By the power of Every power of addiction and bond. Holy Ghost power. In the name of Jesus. Break every satanic pain. In the name of Jesus Christ, mental clarity has come. In the mighty name of Jesus, you did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and sound mind. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of fear, I break you. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus, every addiction, every oppression upon anyone's family, break, break, break. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, break by fire. Break by fire in the name of Jesus. That child that's not behaving properly, that child has mental issues, that child is not that's going the wrong direction. Every power, every evil voice, every chain that wants to drag him to hell, I break it. I cast it out. I silence it in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 We're going to pray like this. Say, anywhere the enemy has tied me down. Anywhere that enemy has tied me down. Tied me down. Whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, you want to do the work of God, but you can't move forward. Whatever the enemy has tied you down, when somebody, somebody ties you, it means that it keeps you from going to where your destiny is supposed to be. It's keeping you from getting to where you're going to go. In the name of Jesus, as Jesus told that woman that was hunched down that you are loosed, as we pray right now, Jesus is going to loose you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to pray like this. Repeat after me. Say, anywhere the enemy has tied me down. 
Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. 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 Set me free. Set, Set me free. free. In the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of right now. Are you tired of your situation? Don't be ashamed to pray right now. Pray right now. Anywhere, anywhere the devil has tied anyone down on this line, under the sound of his voice, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. In the name of Jesus, every trap, every snare of the devil, I break that trap. I break that snare. In the name of Jesus Christ, my soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. Wherever your soul has been trapped, I break it free. In the name of Jesus Christ, any new spiritual rope tying you down to achieve your destiny, I break it by fire. I break it by fire. I break it by fire out of your life, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 We're going to pray like to say, oh, God, my father. Oh, God, my father. Oh, God, my father. Send your helpers. Send, send your send, helpers. Send your helpers. We're going to pray for your family. The Word of God says the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And we should pray to the Father to send laborers. Amen. So your family that has not been saved, we're going to ask God to send his helpers, his laborers, to talk to your family, whether on the radio, whether at their workplace, wherever they are. Amen. We're going to pray like this. Say, oh, God, my Father. Oh, oh God, my, my Father. Send your helpers to speak to my family about Jesus. Send yeah, your helpers. Talk to your family. If you don't, say, you don't have to repeat it like I did. Oh, God, my Father. Send your laborers to help to speak to my family, to speak to my children, to speak to the people in my neighborhood, at my workplace that have not been saved. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of Jesus. Give them understanding. Let them be saved. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my loved one that's went astray, send your laborers to meet them where they are. They may not listen to me, Lord, but they'll listen to the one that you send. Father, in the name of Jesus, send your laborers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 And the last prayer we're going to pray like this. Simple prayer. Say, oh, God, my Father. Oh, God, God, oh God, God, my Father. Father. I need your help. I need, I need your help. Help me. Help, help, me. Me. help, help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Talk to your Heavenly Jesus. Father. You know what you're going through. Nobody knows what you're going through like you. Oh, God, my Father. In the name of Jesus, we cry out for your help. And meet us at the point of our feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, our families, what do we do? Our children, our relatives, our workplace, our job. Oh, Lord, the assignment that you have for us, we need your help. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We need your power, Lord. Help us. Oh, God, my Father, cry out to you today with a humble heart. We need your help. We need your help. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Amen.